So in our last video, we had the ability to add tasks to our to-do list, um, to display them in our code and to show them in our component state. Now let's add the ability to remove a task from our to-do list. Let's go to our app.tsx file in our text editor. Um, and first of all, let's beef up our um, beef up how we add tasks in the first place. So currently all we do is add our um, task as a string. But in order to delete a task, we need to know which task to delete. So let's identify the tasks by um, giving them each a unique ID and giving the string uh, um, an object value. So first of all, let's change this from a string to an object. And we will call this the value. We will have an ID which would be a number. Um, and we are going to um, create a method to create this number, which will be time in milliseconds. Um, and we'll also add another section to this um, object called completed. And by de default, we want this to be false. We'll add this part in a future video, but currently we'll work with these two sections. Um, so let's beef up our iState interface to represent this change. We'll go to the interface at the bottom, and currently it's not a string anymore, it's changed to uh, an object. So we'll create a new interface. We'll call it iTask, and we'll give it our three things, one of which was ID, which was a number. The second was the value, which is a string, that will remain a string. And the third was the completed which is a boolean. Now I'll update this string to an I task. And um, let's go ahead and create this method. Um, so this is a spelling mistake. It's meant to be time, not this in milliseconds. So time in milliseconds. And you notice I put an underscore here. So an underscore usually represents a private method. So let's put that below. All private methods go below public methods. So we'll call it private private underscore time in milliseconds. And this is going to return a number. Awesome. So the way this is going to work is we'll get the current date um, and we'll convert it to, to milliseconds. So let's get the current date by um, creating a variable or a constant called date, which would be a type date. And we'll make a new date. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to return a number, which will be the date, and we're going to use the getTime method. Um, so for those who aren't familiar with this, let me just show this to you in the browser. Um, so let's ignore all these errors at the moment. And um, let's make a variable, so that, like I just did before, called date, and that will equal new date. So if I call date, I'll get the current date, which is Monday, January 15th. 2018 and it's currently 2 past 1 in the afternoon. So now let's get this date and convert it to a time. So this is a get time method that comes default with the, um, the date object and it'll give you a string of numbers which is the millisecond value of the date. Um, so I'm not about to work that out by going to milliseconds to date converter but I'm going to trust JavaScript for now. So this is essentially what we're going to do. Each time an object, or sorry, a task is created, it will assign to it a unique string of numbers, which will be its ID, and the task name will go in here, and by default it will be completed false. Okay, so now we have all of that. Um, let's see what it looks like inside the state. Get rid of that. Um, do we get any errors inside our terminal? Yes, we do. I task is not assignable to type string. Um, okay, let's have a look at why it's giving me this error. Uh, task, I task. Ah, okay. So we need to update our render task method because this has all been changed. So now this is an I task. What we can do, instead of using the index as the ID, we can use the task ID. Then we can change this to the task value. Okay, 
So if we look at the terminal, everything looks green. We'll go into our code and we'll give it a task. And let's see what that looks like inside the state. So the tasks are now arrays. And in our array, we have um, completed false, the ID, and the value of test. Um, so if I create another task and show you what that looks like inside um, inside the React um, dev tool, it will show you that each task has its unique key, which is the um, time in milliseconds um, private method we created, and they each have their value. So now let's go ahead and tell the code to let's create the delete functionality basically. Um, let's go into here and let's beef this up. Instead of having just the string in here, let's add a button to delete. So we'll make this uh, for now span. We'll keep the key as is. Um, and we'll add a button called delete. And we will give it an on click handler of um, delete, uh, delete task, this. And once again, we will have to pass, pass it in something. So let's pass in task ID and um, give it a fat arrow function or the arrow function, ES6 arrow function. Um, and let's create this delete task method. It's not a private method because it's going to be used inside HTML, so I will put it below the handle submit method. It can be anywhere, really. All right, and delete task from my knowledge is going to return, it won't return anything. Um, so let's assign it to avoid. And what this is going to do is it's going to um, use the ES6 filter method to filter out anything that that doesn't have the ID that we've asked, that we've given it. So let's get the ID, which would be a number that we've passed in, and let us um, create a constant of the filtered tasks. Um, and that will be an array of I task. Awesome. So let's get all the tasks in the state. filter them and what we're going to do is filter it based on um, filter each task so that has a type of by task as you'll notice in TypeScript there's a lot of typing involved um, because of types but it, it's for a good cause so just hang with it if it seems tedious okay task ID does not equal ID so basically what this does is it goes through every single um, task inside our, inside our store. It checks if the task ID in the store is is um, does not equal the ID we've passed it. If it doesn't, it passes it through. If it does, it removes it. So then we end up having a filtered list um, with with the tasks that are not with the task ID that hasn't been passed through. Um, so once we have that, let's set the state to our new filtered tasks. I forgot to add an S. All right, which would be set state state. Um, and our tasks will now equal the new filtered tasks over here. Cool. All right, so let's save that. This back, I don't know why it disappeared. Format save. Let's see if we have any issues in our terminal. We don't. Let's go to our browser and add something. Okay, so we have delete next to it. And if I delete task, that disappears. If I add something else, um, a few more things, delete them one by one, they disappear. Cool. Let's check our code to make sure we have. Uh, the correct types for everything. That looks good. Awesome.
Alright, so in our next video we're going to figure out how to um, have tasks completed, so let's make use of this, completed or not completed, and um, yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. As usual, like and subscribe if you have, and I'll see you in the next video.